So why in the world is your pay not keeping up with inflation? Well, truck drivers, paychecks are really not keeping up with inflation. If I look at the last 17 years that I've been in this industry, I have seen drivers pay rates increase from 45 cents per mile to long haul drivers right now currently getting paid about 65 cents per mile. Well, if I take the last 17 years and I do a formula or a calculation of the rise in inflation, I really don't get to the same paychecks of where I need to be for truck drivers pay. So back in 2005, drivers pay rates were 45 cents per mile. Well, if I keep adding between two, three or 4% every single year, and I do that for 17 years, drivers pay rates are really supposed to be around 90 to 95 cents per mile. Why in the world is drivers pay rates not keeping up with inflation? I mean, if you look at housing, housing, I remember my first condo that I bought, back in 2003, I purchased the condo for $265,000. Well, that same condo after 20 years is currently worth about $800,000, literally almost 300%. But driver's pay rates didn't go up 300%. If I look at bread, if I look at eggs, if I look at literally everything in the supermarkets, I can say the exact same thing about it. I think the cost of food has almost doubled in the last 15 years. Well, I can't say the same about your salaries. Now, why is that? Let's get into a little bit more detail. So number one, the increased cost of living. So let's just reverse back to 2003. That's probably when I first bought my first property. It was a condominium here in the GTA, Greater Toronto Area, very much similar prices we have here to Chicago, Illinois. Now, that first condo that I bought back in 2003 was about $265,000. Well, today that condo is probably worth about $800,000. Literally, it has gone up over 300%. Now, rental rates, honestly, I could say the exact same thing. Before, back in 2003, 2004, I would say a basement apartment would probably cost you about seven dollars to $900 here in the greater Toronto area. Now, in today's world, in 2023, the cost of a basement literally is about $2,000 to $2,500, also gone up about 250%. Well, the increased cost of living has gone up between 250 to 300%. Truck drivers' salaries hasn't gone up anywhere near that amount. Well, if you look at 2005 when I was in the industry and pay rates were 45 cents per mile, now they're only 65 cents per mile. Now, when I do the math on that, that's a 45% increase on truck drivers' pay rates. Now, the rate per mile also, I would say, the pretty much same thing. So number two, lack of automatic adjustments. You know, there are some industries out there that really their pay increases gradually, automatically. But here with truck drivers, we do not have that. So the consumer price index, literally, I think that's how we measure inflation, usually goes up between two to 4% every single year, but our driver pay rates are not adjusted that way. It doesn't get increased two to 4% every single year. Again, I'm no financial advisor or an economist, but honestly, I do think that it has something to do with us pumping out truck drivers on these conveyor belts and these mega carriers that are just producing truck drivers by the hundreds. And that's why I feel that truck driver pay rates are not going up because these mega carriers just keep this conveyor belt going with brand new truck drivers, newly licensed truck drivers. They put them in the trucks and that conveyor belt keeps going and going and going. Now, if we stop those conveyor belts, then the demand for truck drivers is going to go up and it's gonna go up significantly and the price for truck drivers, their pay rates would go up significantly. But all these mega carriers, they're all, they're all in it to just produce these truck drivers at a high volume to fill in seats, to fill in these trucks, to get these products moving from the manufacturing plant to consumers or manufacturing plants to, uh, to the purchasers. All right, another reason why I blame the fact that the pay rates are so low within the trucking industry is because who are we kidding? I mean, these mega carriers, they are all about dollars in, dollars out. And for them to have a really good healthy balance sheet and for them to have a really good healthy profit and loss statement so they can pay off their board, so they can pay off all their investors. But in reality, it's us truck drivers, our industry that is not united and as one. Because if we were united and as one, then we would have a voice and we would be able to do something about it. But the way that it is working right now, unfortunately, the trucking industry is completely all on its own. Nobody's united. So there's a ton of competition out there between trucking companies. Instead of uniting all these trucking companies, they're really every man for themselves in a battle. 
and they are trying to compete with each other. Now, instead of competing with each other by paying people higher rates, they have come up with a situation where it is a lot cheaper to train a brand new driver, put them in a truck, fill in a seat, than to pay somebody extra five or 10 cents per mile. All right, so now we're gonna break it four categories, okay? We're gonna take maintenance, we're gonna take insurance, we're gonna take fuel costs, and then we'll take driver's pay. And we'll kind of put a trend here on over the last 17 years because I've been a witness to it only for 17 years. Now, maintenance, I don't know about you guys, but I remember when the billable hour rate for a shop was about 65, maybe $75 an hour back in 2005, maybe $75 an hour. Today, shop rates are about 180 to 190 dollars per hour now if you take that 70 if you take that 85 dollars an hour and you bring it up to 185 dollars an hour well that is a 217 percent increase so let's talk about insurance premiums so when i first got into this industry the cost for a to insure a truck was about five to six hundred dollars per truck per month well, today you're probably looking about three times that rate. It costs about fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars per month, probably around twenty to twenty-four thousand dollars in premiums per year that you would have to pay to insure a truck. Well, if you take five hundred dollars and you increase that to about eighteen hundred dollars, that's over three hundred percent increase on insurance. Now let's talk about fuel costs. Well, when I started out, the fuel costs were about two dollars a gallon. And I could have sworn right now it's about $4 per gallon in order to fill up your truck. So that too has gone up about 200% over the course of the last 15 years. We've had our highs where fuel was about five, five and a half dollars per gallon, but I think it's coming down uh, to about $4 per gallon right now. But that still is about a 200% increase. Now, when we talk about driver's pays, back in 2003, it was 45 cents per mile, and now it's 65 cents per mile, literally a 44% increase. So how is it that the maintenance has gone up about 217%, insurance has gone up 300%, fuel costs has gone up about 200%, but driver's pay has only gone up 44%. Well, why is that? Well, maybe because it's so easy to get a truck driver's license. Why is it that a truck driver can literally get his truck license within a week or two but a plumber needs to work for five years before he gets a license and an electrician needs to work also about three or four years before he gets a license to become an electrician why is it so easy to become a truck driver both in Canada and in the US so I touched a little bit about, on, uh, about on, on this point. Now, I really believe this driver shortage and driver turnover. So first of all, I think driver shortage is a load of crap. We have a problem with driver turnover. We have a problem with the conditions for truck drivers. We have a problem with pay for truck drivers. One small story I'm gonna talk a little bit about is my father. So my father back in 99 or back in 98 was working as a truck driver. Uh, he still works until today, but back in 98 and 99, I believe the minimum wage was about $35,000 was what an average Joe would make working full time. I remember back then, my father was probably making about $150,000 to $175,000 working as an owner operator net every year. That's what he would make back in 98 and 99. Well, that paid about four or five times what the minimum wage was or what the average person was making. A truck driver would make four or five folds. And that was the reason why he sacrificed the f being away from the family. And that was the reason why the truck driver back then would allow themselves to be on the road for such a long time because they knew that the money was exceptionally good. But today, that's just not like that. I mean, I think some some guys working at Dunkin Donuts and Tim Hortons make more money than truck drivers. If you look at the lease purchase program and what's happening out there, you have more, you have guys sometimes making more money at coffee shops than working as truck drivers, which is completely wrong. And about this driver shortage, it's all nonsense. There is no driver shortage out there. We have a problem with retention. We have a problem with pay rates. So if you were a trucking company out there and you would be paying a dollar per mile today, you would have a lineup up to wazoo with truck drivers and good qualified truck drivers and unbelievable drivers and they would be motivated to work and they would be motivated to do the 12, 13,000 miles per month. All right, guys, so now you're probably thinking to yourselves, why in the world can I, here for example, Ronan at ET Transport, why can't I just advertise that I'm paying a dollar a mile? 
Now, the reason why trucking companies cannot just pay a dollar a mile or some guy cannot just wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm gonna increase the rates for all truck drivers. It's because the pay rates for freight are so low, whether it's now, whether it's three months ago, six months, months ago, when you're billing at $2 per mile and you're paying these outrageous costs, in insurance, outrageous cost in maintenance, outrageous cost in fuel, then you're really left with not that much for yourself and for the driver. So that's why a trucking company cannot just wake up one day and say, hey, we're paying a dollar a mile moving forward and we're gonna bill all of our customers accordingly. Now, you're not gonna have any customers left and you, if you start billing them outrageous prices. Now, if there are so many trucking companies around us and they're all billing at $2 per mile, I can't really come in there at $2.15 per mile or $2.20 per mile because I will not get awarded the business. The profit margins within our industry are very, very thin, causing us to not be able to increase driver's pays as fast as we would like to increase them or as much as we would like to increase them. The surroundings will just will not allow us to do so well i hope you learned something from this video i'd love for you guys to comment there's so many comments that you could be making over here i mean the increased cost of living the la the the difference between 2005 versus now the maintenance insurance the premiums how they've all risen you have so much to make a comment on please put a comment down below i read most of them and respond to most of them i'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this and why the truck driver's salaries are really not up to par at the bare minimum of how much inflation has gone up. Driver's pays should also have gone up, but they haven't. So leave a comment down below. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video.